Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 3, Hebrews chapter 8 verse 8, and Lamentations chapter 5 verse 16. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for keeping us and loving us and showing us the way. You are God. We put our hope and our trust in you not in our own ability to hold ourselves up, but in your hands, we put our trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray, lift us up, Lord God. We love you, we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3. While people are saying, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. All right. And so, of course, this is um, the times that they're talking of are when um, Paul is trying to reassure them that this sudden destruction for the those that are are in the world is going to be sudden right it's going to be surprising it is not going to be something that they anticipated happening right this sudden destruction will be very sudden and they will be thinking in one direction but it will happen completely opposite of the way that the world is thinking during that time and so but of course for the children of God for the church um they are are actually going to to expect it, right? It's not going to come upon them as a thief. It is going to to be something that they anticipated. Why? Because they're awake. They are of the light. They are not of darkness and their their mindset and their thoughts are not of the dark, right? They can see what's going on. All right. And so I it's it's so funny because um I've never been in a season <laughs> where um you know more people have said to me that Jesus is coming. And I'm talking about um not just like people, random people, just all over. I mean, every part of the spectrum. I mean, e you, brothers and sisters in Christ have been revealing themselves all around, right? And just, uh, I mean, talking in ways that I wouldn't even expect, you know, getting past the wall of, of race and class and realizing that we're brothers and sisters and speaking about the return of Christ and talking about, it's a buzz in the spiritual atmosphere. It is a buzz. It is in the light. If you are in the light, you can see it, right? And you can anticipate it and you can feel it. You can feel the zeal of it, the hunger of it. It is so soon to come. And so, you know, we are anticipating it because we're walking in the light. And, and if you stay in the light and if you stay with Christ, if you stay following Holy Spirit, you're going to be a birth to it. You're going to, you're going to anticipate it. You're going to know it, right? You're going to feel that, that, that something in the air that tells you it's going to rain. Right. And so I love it just before the rain, when you're walking, you can smell it. It, it smells a certain way. Right. Especially when there's a lot of rain coming, you can just tell because it just it feels and it, it looks and it, it, it smells different. Right. That's the times that we live in. If you walk in the light, you'll be able to tell the difference. You'll be able to tell that that things are accelerating differently, that people's reactions are different. You can tell that the demonic realm is really active in the in the world. Right. They're trying to spread their realm people are more likely to tell others about Christ right and so you know there is just a a buzz in the atmosphere and it's because we are anticipating the return of Christ 
Here, though, it says while people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. And so while they're saying, you know, peace and security, um, the opposite is going to begin to happen. So it, it says as labor pains. So that means that it's going to start and it's going to intensify, right? Um, no labor pain feels good, right? Even in the very beginning, it just does not feel good. It's one of those things that you never feel pain like that ever again, unless you're having a baby, right? And it's, it's a pressure, pain, right? It's a pain of pressure. And so, you know, the pressure that is in, I love the fact that this is the analogy because it is painful and it is pressuring and it does not end until there's a baby there, right? And so the body is going to keep on doing what it's supposed to do until it delivers that baby. And so in the same way, the world is, 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 is going through these contractions, right? They it is groaning. It is wanting the 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 sons of God to reveal themselves. It is it is pressing. It is it is going through something until something happens, right? And what is that something that is going to happen? The culmination of of this birthing process. Well. Jesus Christ will return the second time to the earth, right? And and we know that that is coming. We can we can anticipate his 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 rapture return, right? Which is not actually to the earth. That's why it's not considered his second his second return. It's considered just he, he comes to the clouds, right? And so we meet him in the air, and so you know we can anticipate this 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 contraction, right? And and as it grows closer and and it grows closer, um once that first contraction hits, that's a pain, right? You you can anticipate how do you anticipate a contraction? Well, you get big and you eat more and your belly gets bigger, right? The baby grows and grows and grows to the point that there's no more room to expand. And then contractions start, right? And so it doesn't have to be in the ninth month. It could be whenever it is, right? But you'll know when you feel the pain. And so we're not supposed to receive the wrath, right? As the bride, we're not supposed to receive the wrath. So when that sudden destruction comes, that labor pain, that first labor pain, you know, um, the actual pain itself is going to be experienced not by the church, but by the world, the ones who have rejected him, the ones who have not come under his covering, right? And so when that first contraction comes, it says then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman. So that means that even though, you know, they are anticipating one thing, right? It, uh, something else is going to happen. A sudden clinch is going to happen and, and that destruction is going to come. It says, and they will not escape. Everyone in the world is going to experience this test. If you are left in the world, you will experience the test, right? The test, the trial that the world is going to face. There will be no escape, right? The only way out is, is through death or or through the return of Christ right once that thing comes and so you know we have to put our trust in God that we are his bride and we are not to experience wrath right and this moment of sudden destruction is not going to sneak up on us right because we walk in the light we are children of the light which it talks about actually more in first Thessalonians chapter five, if you want to read it, let's look at the second verse, Hebrews chapter eight, verse eight, for he finds fault with them. When he says, behold, the days are coming 
declares the Lord, when I will establish a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. All right. And so this is, of course, speaking about this new covenant, right? And and it, it says, he, for he finds fault with them when he says, so that means that there is justification in the Old Testament for a new covenant coming. There is mention of it. There is precedence, right? And so how do we know that there's precedence? Let's look at these words. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord. That means that they're not here yet, but they are to come. It says, when I will establish a new covenant, Wow. So this covenant that they thought was going to last actually in their own um, Old Testament, it, it's speaking of the fact that it would not last, right? That there was something greater coming, a new covenant. It says, when I establish a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, all right, so the house of Israel and the house of Judah were not meant to stay under the old covenant. What was the old covenant? That that sacrificial um, covenant, that sacrificial atonement um, for sin, that that following the Ten Commandments and then all of the other 600 plus command um, rules that they were following to try to keep up with that law and making more and more and more and more and more rules to try to to try to go through these motions but there was no relationship so there was fault there right? There was fault. Why? Because man was still sinning and they were not righteous. The law could not produce righteousness in man, right? And so because of this, you know, th they always fell short. And, and, and it wasn't just that they were sinning that they fell short. They fell short because they did not have lack of, they did not have relationship, right? The seed of Abraham establishes that faith. It was by faith that Abraham, you know, was able to be made righteous, right? It, he believed God and it was accounted unto him as righteousness. And so, you know, that in itself, the fact that we are the seed of Abraham and that we believe God first, so we have faith in him first, right? And we walk in his ways based on that. And, and it's not just a circumcision. It's, it's not just a bunch of rules. It's not just a bunch of regulations. It is actual relationship. It is sonship. It is love there, right? It is the spirit that is behind the law. And so it says, for he finds fault with them when he says, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will establish a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. And so God is letting us know, hey, you know, for those who are, are under this old covenant, right? Then you're leaning on a house of cards, right? You're leaning on something that will not stand. It won't protect you when that sudden destruction comes. Why? Why won't this protect you? Because you cannot do it perfectly, right? It has been proven that this cannot be done perfectly unless it's Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus is the only one who, who, can do this thing perfectly right and and we have to know that it whenever it's our efforts um whenever it's our own doing um we need help from god right we need we need we need his spirit to lead us and guide us right but if you lean on yourself then you are are in the area of fault Right. Because you're still in that old covenant when God has provided something new, something greater, something lasting. 
right? We are able to claim the promises of Israel because we are children of God now. And guess what? If we are able to claim these promises, then we can walk in this new covenant, right? But if you come into Christ and you think that you're going to follow the 10 commandments into heaven, then you're not following Christ. You're following the 10 commandments and you're not able to do it on your own. You're not able to perfectly do it, right? And you're not out there. We're not sacrificing animals. The perfect sacrifice has already been made, right? We need to follow Christ Jesus and he's going to align us with those 10 commandments. He's going to align us with the word of God. He's going to tell us what takes precedence over what, right? He's going to tell us where the love is in the law, where the spirit is in the law, right? And so that's why we have need of him. Yes, the old covenant has purpose. It is not, has it, Christ didn't come to abolish the law, right? He came to fulfill it. He is the epitome. He is the peak. He is salvation. And so we need to come to him and not go to the law, not go through our own going through the motions, right? How do you go through the motions in modern day besides just following the law? Well, you just keep doing these things, right? We do things. And sometimes when we're doing things, our works are incomplete, right? Sometimes when we're doing things, but we don't have the love inside of us, we're going through the motions, but we have not sought God. We have not, we we assume that this is the right way, but there's a way that seems right into a man that can lead to destruction, right? And we don't want to walk down that path of destruction. We want to have peace. We want to have joy. We want to have, uh, you know, we want to have the right way, right? Not leaning on the old way, the old covenant, wearing as long of a skirt as you can, covering up your head everywhere you go and going through all these rituals, but not having a relationship with God, right? Not talking to God, not being pleasing in his sight. Amen. All right. Let's look at the third verse. Lamentations chapter five, verse 16. The crown has fallen from our head. Woe to us for we have sinned. All right. And so this is who the destruction would come upon, right? Those that will be in tribulation, those that will, will be of the thirst, right? Those that will be of, of, of destruction. And so here the, the children of Israel were being bombarded. They were, they were humbled, right? Because they would not humble themselves. And so God allowed this to come upon them because of their sin. And, and here the writer is acknowledging, which is possibly Jeremiah who's writing this. Um, he's acknowledging, you know, just the fact that, you know, we've fallen, right? It says the crown has fallen from our head. So whereas they were once um, spiritually the top, the upper echelon, right? The, the sons of God, right? The children of God, the chosen um, children of God. Now they've been humbled. They are low. They are being destroyed. Their children are being destroyed. They're barely eating. They're barely surviving. Slaves are there, are there, are their leaders, right? And the people who are in charge of them, right? People are living in their houses, their old houses. And, and, you know, they are, are just, you know, going lower and lower. And here he is acknowledging the crown has fallen from our head. Woe to us for we have sinned. And, you know, we all go through moments like this, right? Where you realize I have stepped away from what God has spoken to me about. And he, he makes it clear, right? He made it clear through Jeremiah, right? He made it clear through the prophets that this was coming, but they chose to listen to who they wanted to listen to rather than listening to the people of God. Pray for clarity in the spirit. Pray for wisdom in the spirit to know God's voice, right? And no other follow, right? We don't want to follow anyone else except the voice of God, right? We belong to him and we know his voice. 
follow his voice, follow his unction, follow his calling, right? Do things because they are what he is telling you to do and not because you're going through the motions of doing something that feels religious or going to church out of habit and and not not being enveloped in that worship, not not going through you know what you're doing out of love you need to be in love we need to have passion we need to have zeal we need to have desire right god is showing us these things beforehand so that we don't get enveloped in the world of saying peace and safety so that we don't get caught up in stuff right whereas you know god has got the light on over here and saying hey look what's really going on right? We need to put our hope and our trust in God and we need to go after him with our whole heart. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for showing us that peace and safety is a a false concept in this world, Lord God. Help us to walk in the light. Help us to see what's truly going on, Lord we love you. We give you all the praise. Forgive us for our sins. Help us not to get caught up in stuff. Lord God, we know we have to live in this world. We are occupying this world, Lord God, but help us not to be of the world. Lord Jesus, help our mindsets to be different for you. Help us to be enveloped by Holy Spirit, leading us and guiding us into all truth and all things everywhere we go no matter what we do in jesus name we pray we love you jesus forgive us for our sins let us be humble now before you come lord in jesus name we pray amen all right you guys take care and be blessed